Washington Watch with Tony Perkins is brought to you by Family Research Council and is entirely listener supported. Portions of the show discussing candidates are brought to you by Family Research Council Action. For more information on anything you've heard today or to find out how you can partner with us in our ongoing efforts to promote faith, family, and freedom, visit TonyPerkins.com. Also, to leave a comment about Washington Watch, call our watch line at 1-866-372-7234. That's 1-866-372-7234. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. Faith, family, freedom. American Family Radio. As a federal or state employee, you have the opportunity to support the American Family Association through the combined federal campaign by designating a monthly payroll deduction using 12037. You help AFA continue to fight for your family. So when you complete your CFC form, remember AFA's number is 12037. And thank you for your help. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. American Family News, I'm Robert Thornton. President Joe Biden will deliver the State of the Union tonight. The president is expected to talk about the economy and make another claim that his policies are working. Viewers can also expect to hear about police reform, COVID-19, and climate change. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders will deliver the GOP response. Democrat Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips said he believes Biden was elected to restore the soul of the nation. President Biden has delivered the most important thing that this country has ever needed, and that is competency in lieu of chaos. According to a new poll from the Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs Research, just 37 percent of Democrats say they want Biden to seek a second term, down from 52 percent in the weeks before last year's midterm elections. Tune in tonight for AFN updates on the State of the Union and the Republican response. Using underwater drones, warships, and inflatable vessels, the Navy carried out an extensive operation to gather all of the pieces of the massive Chinese spy balloon a U.S. fighter jet shot down off the coast of South Carolina Saturday. In the newest images released by the Navy today, sailors were seen pulling in broad swaths of the balloon's white outer fabric and shell structure. The head of the U.S. Northern Command said the teams were taking precautions to safeguard against the chance of any part of the balloon being rigged with explosives. Here's Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell on the story with Martha McCallum. It seems to me hard to explain why you would let this balloon, beginning in the Aleutian Islands, lots of open space, not many people below, Alaska, Canada, and wait until it got into the Atlantic Ocean after surveying all of American uh, territory to shoot it down. Countries from around the world are pitching in to help Turkey and Syria after back-to-back -back earthquakes left a lot of destruction. Fox's Greg Palcott is in Turkey with the latest. It is a scene being played out all over Turkey. Rescue workers desperately trying to find anybody still alive in the rubble. All the while, friends, family, loved ones watch and wait. They need oil, they need gas, they need electricity, they need heat, they need it all. They're getting help from the Turkish government, which has declared a state of emergency for the next three months for this area, and from the world. 70 different countries sending rescue workers here, including the United States. Attorneys representing two sets of Wisconsin parents are asking a state court to rule in favor of parental rights. AFN's Chris Woodward has more. The attorneys are with Alliance Defending Freedom and Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, where Luke Berg is deputy counsel. We have a case against the Kettle Marine School District that has an unwritten policy to affirm and treat a child as if they are the opposite sex at school upon request, but without parental consent. One of the families represented had a daughter who struggled with her gender identity and for a time thought she wanted to be a boy. She requested to change her name and pronouns at school. After researching it, her parents decided that would not be best for her, and so the parents told the school they wanted the school to refer to her using her legal name and pronouns. The school said, sorry, too bad if you continue to send her here. Uh, we're going to call her whatever she wants. doesn't matter what you want, parents. So they quickly withdrew her from school, 
withdrew her from the affirming environment that she was in. And a few weeks later, she changed her mind and realized her parents were right, that she was really a girl. So good end to that story for her, but doesn't change the policy of the school district. So that family and another family that currently has children in the district have sued the school for this policy. And our position is that this policy violates parents' rights and that school districts have to obtain parental consent before they can begin treating children as the opposite sex while they are at school. I'm Chris Woodward. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said Tuesday that if the U.S. job market further strengthens in the coming months or inflation readings accelerate, the Fed may have to raise its benchmark interest rate higher than it now projects. Powell's remarks follow the government's blockbuster report last week that employers added 517,000 jobs in January. That concludes the news at this hour. You can always join us next hour or CAFN.net for more. For American Family News, I'm Robert Thornton. Thanks for listening to AFR. I'm Tim Watson. Bro, no way that just happened. <sighs> yeah, this radio is old, man. Wait, you have Roku, don't you? Uh, yeah, but how's that gonna help us? Dude, AFR's on Roku now. Oh, seriously? Yes, where's your remote? All right, here we go. We're in the same... Uh, you are a bracket. genius. Oh, bracket. yeah. American Family Radio. Available on Apple and Android products. Amazon Alexa. And now available on Roku. Darkness is not an affirmative force. It simply reoccupies the space vacated by the light. This is the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. It should be uncomfortable for a believer to live as a hypocrite. Delivering people out of the bondage of mainstream media. And the philosophies of this world. God has called you and me to be his ambassadors. Even in this dark moment. Let's not miss our moment. And now, the Hamilton Corner. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hamilton Corner here on American Family Radio. I am your host, Abraham Hamilton III, and we have a full squad back in the building. We were one man down, but we still didn't frown yesterday. But now we got the whole squad back, and we're ready to attack. But not like ducks. Quack, quack. <laughs> I know nobody's laughing but me. <laughs> but I laugh at my own terrible jokes. It's terrible. I know it. <laughs> Welcome to the Hamilton Corner. Uh, Abraham Hamilton III is my name. I'm your host for the program. I'm joined by the full corner contingent. Right across from me, the man, my man, 100 grand behind the boards. Also a percussionist that act like you know about him. Mr. Bobby Rosa. And in the screening room, we have double trouble over there. Your recovering friendly neighborhood with a haul like Mr. Marty Sparks lighting up the dark, ladies and gentlemen. And producer extraordinaire, Mr. J. Mack. He's back, the real J. Mizak. Often imitated, but never duplicated. Y'all know what it is. We're ready to rock and roll with today's edition of the program at this very moment. Many of you, if not most of you, are making that transition from your part-time jobs where you generate an income to your full-time jobs. Your full-time jobs are where you cultivate an outcome. Now, I want to make sure I communicate this well. We've talked at length on this program that worship is not merely an activity, but believers who... Uh, worship the Lord, as the scripture says, in spirit and in truth. Uh, worship is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle, all right? The pinnacle of the lifestyle of worship is exemplified by obedience, okay? So when I say your full-time jobs are cultivating an outcome, I am saying that based on the scripture's instruction to Christ followers to execute our Lord's commission, all right? That's what I'm saying. The reason why I emphasize the full-time job is cultivating an outcome and that you engage in your full-time job as you're heading home, because all too often, professing Christ followers spend ourselves in many different activities, many different exercises, and even in uh, the income generation engagements, only to leave our homes with the leftovers from a day well spent. Sometimes we're so spent that we don't really do much at home, but watch a little TV and then 
go to sleep. But I want to encourage you to resist the temptation to allow the world to dictate a hierarchy of engagement to you, to where you place emphasis and importance and primacy on everything else except your family. The Lord ordained the family as a feature of his creative ingenuity. The first institution that God created was the family. The first command that God gave to mankind was issued within the familial context. The four components of it, fruitfulness. Isn't that amazing? The first component of the initial command that is often described as the dominion mandate includes fruitfulness. Hmm. Perhaps that's why we see so much warfare against children, especially unborn babies. Have you, thought, have you ever thought about that? God says one of the first orders of business for mankind is fruitfulness. Man says, you know what? Let's create a fiction and pass it off as law to slaughter children that are being reproduced. Let's describe them as, oh, they're, they're just uh, a clump of cells. The next component, fruitfulness. Multiply, related to fruitfulness, right? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. The first three components of it have to do with reproduction. We know the scripture teaches reproduction is graced within the context of a loving, lifelong commitment of a husband to his wife. And the fourth component of fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishing the earth is subduing the earth, which I've explained before. The word subdue, is the Hebrew word for that is kavash, which means the humans who are reproducing, being fruitful, and replenishing the earth are then tasked with the grace of God to make <laughs> the raw material that God has deposited in the earth fruitful for maximum human flourishing. Now, God is keenly able to make the earth maximally fruitful of his own initiative, but he has this penchant for initiating work and leaving room for his offspring to fulfill it. We see the same phenomenon in the New Testament when it is the intention of the Messiah for the gospel of the kingdom to be preached in the entirety of the world, yet he confines his physical ministry on earth to the geographical boundaries of Israel. Why would he do that? That's where you and I come in. Matthew 28, Mark, Mark 16 tells us, because we are tasked with Go ye therefore into all the world, making disciples, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Acts chapter 1, and you shall be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. What I'm simply encouraging you to do is to recognize that right in your home, you have an opportunity to participate in executing our Lord's commission, starting right in your own home. If you are blessed to have young ones still in your homes, these are ones you are assigned to proclaim the gospel to. The scripture instructs it is not the, the corporate gathered body's responsibility. It is not the youth pastor's responsibility of first instance. It is not the school's responsibility. It is the Christian parent's responsibility to evangelize, to catechize, and to disciple our children. That's what the scriptures say. The, the corporate body of believers role is in a support posture to help us in doing that. The church's function is to equip us to do that. So as you're making that transition from your part-time jobs to your full-time jobs, understand what you are getting the opportunity to do. Understand that you are stepping into an additional context a primary context that God has created for the propagation of the gospel and multi-generational disciple-making. And it should be regarded in that fashion. So as you transition to full-time work, do so with full intentionality, understanding the scope and the breadth and the depth and the height of this privilege you get to participate in. And may our Lord transform your homes into altars of his presence as we endeavor to obey him, starting right in our own homes. To the word of God we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is a day of reminder. Today a reminder. You, you guys hear me say all the time, the world is going to world. We should not be shocked when the world worlds. 
It is noteworthy when you have the going public of Satan worship, <laughs> but it's really just the external, I don't mean to minimize it, but it's really the externalization of the things that are going on behind the scenes, you know? And just to be clear, the dude dressing up in a red suit with horns on it, that's his depiction of what he may think represents Satan. That ain't Satan. That dude don't know what Satan looks like, you know. But it is noteworthy that that's what they decided to do. But 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. I want to remind you of what the Lord has told us in his word. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses, or some translations say strongholds. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. The reminder I want to offer you is that as we witness uh, the march of wickedness in our society, um, as we see these things happening, guys, we are not without uh, weaponry to respond. But we just have to make sure that we respond properly. Too many of us allow the sum total of our desire to respond to be fleshly. We respond to the flesh, and I get it. <clears throat> the reason why that is because most of us are more comfortable dealing in the flesh. <laughs> That's just the truth. But I want to encourage you <laughs> to welcome the Lord's transformation internally to where we grow to the place where the flesh is no longer our default posture. The things that we're witnessing, the demonic Grammys performance, the stuff I'm going to share with you today um, on this program, some of it, my hope and my prayer is that it spurs you to employ the tools that God has provided for us to respond appropriately. You've heard me say before, this time, 21st century America, the 21st century is not the first time things have gotten dark in the world. It's, it, it's not. It's not the first time. You know, I was reading my own, my, my, my personal uh, devotional time, uh, Judges chapter 19. It's only 21 chapters in the book of Judges. Well, the very same things that happened in Sodom, Guess where they happened? Within the nation of Israel. Not only were they happening, I mean, the same thing. You had a Levite who was traveling from the northern territory of Ephraim. He was traveling back to Bethlehem of Judah. He intentionally sought uh, to spend the night, and he specifically said, in Gibeah of Benjamin. There's a whole other story. Gibeonites weren't supposed to be a part of Israel, but Joshua, it's a whole lot. We'll, maybe we'll get to that another day. But you have Gibeonites who took up residence within uh, the tribe of Benjamin, and they became a part of Israel, functionally, all right? And the Levite specifically told his servant, you know what? I don't want to stop in these other cities that are closer to where we are. I want to make sure we get to, to Gibeah and Benjamin to be with our own people. <laughs> so you mean to tell me him going to stay with his own people led to tragedy? Oh, yes, full on. When he arrives... In Gibeah of Benjamin, what does the scripture say? The men of the town surround his home, demand. And it was an, el an older uh, Benjamite who invited him to stay with him, he allowed his, his concubine and his servant and his animals to stay. The men of the town surrounded his house, pounding on his door, demanding. Read it for yourself. Demanding that the local Benjamite bring out the traveling Levite so that they may know him. Very explicit. Similar to Lot, the local Benjamite says, no, you can take my daughter and the Levite offered his concubine. The Levite's concubine ends up going out there and they rape her to death. This is in the Bible. Now, you would think Sodom and Gomorrah, we all know what happened there. S sulfur, brimstone. That's not what happened. And Benjamin... Guess what happened? Civil war breaks out in the nation. The scripture points out 
that the Benjamites, though they're engaged in perverted sexual activity, they were comprised of skillful warriors who could throw a stone from a sling at a hair and not miss. This is what the Bible says. And 26,000 Benjamites mounted up weapons of war to go to war against 400,000 Israelites for the sole purpose of protecting their perversion. Go and read it. Go and read it. The scripture reveals that the Lord instructed the Israelites to go to war against the Benjamites. In the first two battles, they lost. Ultimately, the Lord gave them victory and the entire tribe of Benjamin was almost wiped out. But the point of me raising this is that the darkness that we see is not new to the earth, even though it may be new to us in our lifetime. And my point in raising all of this is to illustrate the reality that God is not wondering what he's going to do in response to this. And he's deposited his people, you and me, via his regenerative power to be his offspring in, his, in our times. Do we believe that the weapons of our warfare are mighty to the pulling down of fortresses and strongholds? And if we believe that, if we say we believe it, why don't we live like we do? That's Judges chapter 19. Jesse, read Judges chapter 19, 20 and 21. You'll see exactly what I just described. It is high time for the believer, our hearts to be merged with our king so that we respond appropriately in light of what he's revealing to us. Francis had what many would consider a tough, tragic, and troubled life. Pastor Joseph Parker. A doctor's error left her at six weeks of age with lifelong blindness. In her autobiography, Frances June Crosby chose to write these amazing words. It seemed intended by the blessed providence of God that I should be blind all my life, and I thank him for the dispensation. By the way, many know Frances June Crosby so much better by the name Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby blessed the church and the world with songs that include Blessed Assurance, All the Way My Savior Leads Me, and many, many others. Make it your goal to thank God in all circumstances, for even in tough times, God really does run our cups over in blessing in so many ways. Find encouraging blogs from Pastor Joseph at afa.net slash the stand. I feel so hopeless. hopeless. Is there any hope? I, I just feel like there's no hope at all. No, no. Is there any hope? Get hope. Get hope. Nothing causes me to lose hope like disappointment. That's TWR President Lauren Libby. Something I'd been counting on didn't happen. A relationship goes south. Trust lost in someone or something I had counted upon. When disappointment strikes, my frame of reference gets very, very short. Everything focuses on the short-term disappointment. What's the cure? Realizing that better things are ahead. Jesus said he would never fail or forsake us. He promised to be with us no matter the circumstances. He has our best interests at heart, and he always offers a brighter long-term future. Disappointed? Lost hope? Tell Jesus and see your hope quotient rise. Need more hope? We have resources waiting for you, including a free devotional. You'll find them at GetHopeRadio.com. That's GetHopeRadio.com. In His Image, delighting in God's plan for gender and sexuality is changing hearts and lives. It speaks directly to the power and the grace of God. It gives me hope for people that I know that are struggling. The whole idea of In His Image has moved me. We actually had one gentleman contact us and he said that this film changed his mind about this issue. We had a pastor reach out to us and he said that he'd been struggling with hatred in his heart towards people in the LGBTQ community. And this film helped him to realize he needed to have compassion and show people the love of Christ. We also had this same sex attracted couple contact us and they said after seeing the film, they wanted to live obedient lives for Christ no matter what. And they said, please, Please pray for us. We know this is going to be hard. We've even had people come to faith in Jesus through In His Image. To find out more, visit inhisimage.movie. Shining light into the darkness. This is the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. Welcome back. Abraham Hamilton III here. You're listening to the Hamilton Corner or watching. However you're doing that, wherever you're doing that, thank you so much for doing it. Well, 
I won't discuss a lot about this. Well, I have a couple things I need to mention first. Well, I didn't bring that other, that other sheet, but I remember it. April, let me get it. I have it right here in my calendar. Yes, April 19th through the 22nd in Paris, Tennessee, uh, Truth for a New Generation, Paris, Tennessee will take place. Uh, Dr. Alex McFarland is uh, hosting uh, the conference. The theme for the conference is Truth Matters. It will take place at the Tennessee Valley Community Church in Paris, Tennessee. It's near uh, Nashville, Tennessee, April 19th through the 22nd, 23rd. Sorry, thank you. April 19th through the 23rd. Uh, you can register for the conference by going to alexmcfarland.com slash conferences. alexmcfarland.com slash conferences. You want to look for Truth for a New Generation or TNG Paris, Tennessee. Uh, that will happen then. In addition to that, this Sunday, if you are in the North Dallas area, I will be joining uh, my brother and my friend, Pastor Teren Dames, in the North Dallas Community Bible Fellowship. Uh, Lord willing, I will be preaching the Sunday sermon, uh, the sermon there Sunday morning, this Sunday morning, this weekend. Uh, and I was told I could let you know that you are welcome to come if you're in the area. Uh, it will be a wonderful opportunity to see you there in person. I, I guess I need to start paying rent in Dallas. I've been in Dallas a lot already this year. Somebody will have to give me a condo or something in Dallas. You you got me, Bobby? Bobby, look, Bobby, Bobby said, no problem, I got you. <laughs> oh, you pointing over there. <laughs> in addition to that, man, a lot of announcements. Um, the Marriage Family Life Conference 2023 is here. We are now in the early bird registration phase. All right. So you would go to marriagefamilylife.com. I'm sorry, marriagefamilylife.net. Register. Use the code earlybird23. I have to tell you, early bird registration is almost over. Uh, so if you want to, if you want to get on early, you know, you got to do it now. <laughs> uh, but the conference will be July 6th through the 8th at the Cadence Bank Arena in Tupelo, Mississippi. So if you've been in the past, uh, the Cadence Bank Arena is the same arena where it was hosted last year, uh, but the Caden, Cadence Bank has just purchased the naming rights for the arena. So what was the Bancorp South Arena is now the Cadence Bank Arena. And I am really, really, really looking forward uh, to this conference. Uh, some of the speakers uh, include one of my favorites, Dr. Jason Lyle. Oh, my gosh. If you have not... Uh, witnessed the, this brother speak. He's an astrophysicist. <laughs> uh, Bob, you remember, because I remember you were in uh, the Youth Apologetics track. We used this display showing uh, the planet's alignment and how it declares the glory of God. It's just amazing. You, 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 I mean, that alone is worth it, in my opinion. Uh, we also have Dr. Kathy Cook. She was amazing uh, last year, um, and I expect her to be amazing this year as well. Dr. George Barna. Yes, Dr. George Barna, founder of the For uh, Barna Group. Uh, now the head of uh, culture and faith research studies at the Arizona Christian University. Uh, we'll have Dr. Lee Brand, Jr., pastor of Faith Baptist Church in Bartlett, uh, Tennessee, a beautiful brother. I can't wait uh, to hear what the Lord would have to say to us through him. Uh, uh, Jenna Ellis will be speaking. Uh, you hear her in the mornings here on AFR. Um, Israel Wayne, uh, an apologist, uh, an advocate for discipling our children at home. This brother has been a blessing to me and my family. We use several of his, of his books uh, to disciple our children. One of my favorite of Israel Wayne's is education. Does God have an opinion? You need to get it. You need to get it regardless of where you are in response to what he offers in the book. You need to see the research he provides for you in that book and many, many, many others. Uh, my brother, Will Addison will be there. My sister, Will Miki Addison will be there which she's not my biological sister, but she's my sister in the Lord. <laughs> People ask me that all the time. Are you and Miki really sister and brother? <laughs> and I will be speaking as well at the conference. So marriagefamilylife.net is where you need to go. And if you've been there before or if you know someone who's been there before, ask them about it and see what they will tell you. All right. Let us commence to weaving. And that's just some of the people. I didn't even tell you everybody who will be there. And I didn't even, even mention yet one of my favorite features of the Marriage Family Life Conference, which is the Youth Apologetics Track. Uh, we believe very strongly 
that our children need to be equipped to stand in this day and age just as we adults need to stand. And so we have an entire track dedicated to equipping children uh, with an apologetics framework. And I've heard from several attendees in the past that there was that was their first introduction to apologetics as a Christian discipline. So uh, it will be very, very worthwhile. All right. No, Connie says, do you have to be married to attend? You do not. There is no nuptial prerequisite. No, you do not. And and we, <laughs> you like that, huh, Bobby? We discuss marriage, family, and life. So it's not an exclusive marriage conference, but we discuss all of these issues. That's why you have so many, uh, such a broad array of, of pr- presenters. So come on through, Connie. You never know. You might meet somebody else who claimed that Connie was not married. I mean, I ain't trying to play you know, matchmaker, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, you're trying to look for like-minded folks. You go where like-minded folks go, right? All right, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. All right. Tonight, I know you guys are waiting with bated breath. That just as the New York Times has opened up broadside attacks against Mr. Joseph Robinette Biden and Kamala Harris on the same day. It's amazing. The same day, the New York Times just allows these... Random opinion pieces, which are not so random. All of a sudden, you have Democrat insiders saying, oh, they don't have uh, confidence in Joe Biden. We support him, but we don't want him to run again. The same day you have these stories coming out about Kamala Harris from people in our own, our own staffers saying that they've lost hope in her. Y'all think that's a coincidence? I don't. I don't. Because it's time, you see. I've told you guys before. Mr. Biden is not going to run for re-election. He has served the, the useful, y'all fill in the blank, has served his purposes, and now they want him to move on. So, but the State of the Union address is happening tonight. I don't know how many of you will not be watching it along with me. <laughs> I probably am going to watch some of it just because of my job, not because I want to. And my wife is going to be like, Abraham, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Um, but I am not encouraging you to watch it. Um, and Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the newly elected governor in Arkansas, will be offering the Republican response to the State of the Union address. But that is happening tonight, and that is all I'm going to say about that. Moving on. <laughs> I wanted to share this story with you, which is interesting in light of the our conversation yesterday uh, about, you know, what is 200 feet tall? Weighs a couple thousand pounds and may or not be may or may not be carrying explosive devices and floats from Alaska through Canada. Just 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 over, as Bobby said yesterday, silo country, sensitive military information, data, weapons, the whole gambit and over to South Carolina and then 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 into the Atlantic Ocean and then where it shot down. And then this is so hilarious to me, you know, because according to what we've learned from the wreckage from the shot down Chinese spy balloon. That's what it was, by the way. <laughs> uh, the thing looked like it cost ten, twenty thousand dollars. Why would we use a million dollar missile? I mean, you're talking about overkill. You could have used a. I, mean, I could have. You know, I could have got one of the boys from. I, I could have got. I could have got my boys from Swamp People. Elizabeth, shoot them, shoot them, Lizzie. Use a million dollar missile? Like, really? I mean, you trying to flex that you trying to do? Yeah, I'm big bad. We're going. That's just dumb to me. To me. I mean, you know, you know it, it's it's a balloon, but you're gonna use a missile. And still, I still, I would like. Let, let's work on something. Let's get me credentials to go to the press briefing room. Now I need this in my life now. This time, I'm gonna press for this. Because I'm gonna ask. Why isn't there more conversation about capturing the thing? Why not catch it? Why not? Nobody wants to ask that question. I want to ask it. I'm I'm going to see what I can do. I need some press credentials. uh, Yeah, right. (laughs) But get into what I want to discuss. North Dakotans taking matters into their own hands. This is very interesting to me. The people of North Dakota saw the Chinese plan 
for opening a corn mill near a sensitive military base and took matters into their own hands. I, I told you before about the, the communist Chinese government buying up farmland, buying up things next to, specifically next to military sites all across our country, right? <coughs> Excuse me, listen. In, in, in the wake of what has repu- rep- reputedly been a Chinese spy balloon being shot down after it floated over sensitive U.S. military installations, the Grand Forks City Council, Grand Forks, Dakota, the Grand Fork, Grand Forks City Council being keenly aware that the U.S. military did not have jurisdiction to stop the project, voted unanimously on Monday to block Chinese food producer Fu Feng, the Fu Feng Group, from building... Bobby, you're distracting me now. I'm just kidding. No, no, it's good. Bobby, he said who? The Fu Feng Group. F-U-F-E-N-G. The Fu Feng Group. They wanted to build a corn mill in South Dakota. That's what they said they wanted to build, at least. They wanted to build it 12 miles away from the Grand Forks Air Force Base. Coincidence? (laughs) Now, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS, back in October 2022, upon learning that the Fufang Group Yeah, kind of like Fang Fang. It does sound like Fang Fang, but it's Fu Fang on this one. When they set to acquire the property next to the Grand Forks Air Force Base, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States warned that this would be a problem for American national security. They explained that the Grand Grand Forks Air Force Base is the center of military activities related to both air and space operations. This came from U.S. Air Force Assistant Secretary Andrew P. Hunter. He said that last October, October 22. Then North Dakota Senators John Hoven and Kevin Kramer in January also emphasized this is a bad idea. All right? Senator Kramer went on to explain that while the the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States concluded that it didn't have jurisdiction, the department was explicit in explaining that this Fufang project represents a significant threat to national security with both near and long-term risks of significant impact on our defense operations. Senator Kramer went on to say, quote, with regard to Fufang, if you're going to strategically decouple, that means we don't want the Chinese investment, end quote. Prior to even the senators weighing in, Air Force Major Jeremy Fox wrote an extensive memoranda explaining why Grand Forks should not allow Fufang to put up this purported corn mill. And I'm saying purported corn mill. Nobody else is saying it. I'm saying it's a purported corn corn mill. In Major Jeremy Fox's memo, he said, quote, some of the most sensitive elements of Grand Forks exist with the digital uplinks and downlinks inherent with unmanned air systems and their interaction with space-based assets. If proximal access were given to our adversaries and their collections were directed at us, it would present a costly national security risk causing grave damage to the United States' strategic advantages. Passive collection of those signals would be undetectable, as the requirements to do so would merely require ordinary antennas tuned to the right collecting frequencies. This introduces a grave vulnerability to our Department of Defense installations and is incredibly compromising to U.S. national security. Now, this is what the Air Force Major said last year. And I strongly believe that the thing that moved the Grand Fork City Council to respond in this manner was the Chinese spy balloon. These guys want to put up a corn mill. So there's nowhere else in America y'all want to put up a corn mill but ne- next to the U.S. Air Force Base, huh? Oh, that, that nothing could go wrong there. And it just happens to be an Air Force Base, whereas Major Jeremy Fox explained that it has significant digital uplinks and downlinks with unmanned air systems and our U.S. interaction with space-based assets. Y'all think that's coincidence? Because I don't. 
Now, of course, we live in the United States. What about liberty concerns? In this instance, many municipal councils have the authority concerning zoning. So you have the city council's wherewithal to utilize their, their processes to determine whether or not this is something that's beneficial, not only for the individuals who may make millions of dollars by selling land to the Chinese, but it is a proper utilization of their review power as a city council. This is not some individual acting as a despot or a dictator, but this is the city council in Grand Forks doing this. We need to have more urgency with decoupling from China. As I said yesterday, these people have already declared war on the U.S., but we're like boo the fool talking about, oh, yeah, but hey, come bring your money. You can buy some land right over here. What land would you like to look? Oh, I wonder where I wonder where I would like to put Fufang. I wonder. I know. Grand Forks. It just happens to be 12 miles away from a facility that's a U.S. Air Force facility that has digital communications infrastructure. <laughs> As I said yesterday, I don't think any other nations around the world would be as naive. The people have declared war on us. They're taking steps to demonstrate that. And it's high time that we awaken to the reality of what's going on in China. When you hear this... This is American Family News. You know what follows is the truth. Your news from a Christian perspective. Hundreds of teachers are going to have to walk into that school building and they are forced to swallow political ideology that in many cases violates their very faith and conscience. If you miss it at the top of the hour, American Family News podcasts are available at AFN.net and sign up for our daily news brief at AFN.net. So, Hannah, she's just one of the women who did struggle with infertility in the Bible. Hannah's Heart with Ann Cockrell and Kendra White. Hannah took her pain to God and God heard her and was with her. Hannah's Heart helps couples process infertility and miscarriage through a biblical lens. Join us Saturday afternoon at 5 Central on American Family Radio. Find the podcast at AFR.net. What does it mean to be born again? This is David Wheaton, host of The Christian Worldview. When the religious leader Nicodemus came to Christ, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God generates this spiritual birth, at which point one goes from dead in sins to alive in Christ. Now able to see and believe in Christ for who he is and what he has done through his life, death, and resurrection, one will trust Christ as Savior and obey Him as Lord. If you have not been born again, call out to God in repentance and place your faith for forgiveness and eternal life in His Son. Hear an interview with Pastor Stephen Lawson at thechristianworldview.org and then join us this weekend for another topic that will sharpen your worldview. Listen to The Christian Worldview with David Wheaton, Saturday mornings at 8 Central on American Family Radio. Hello, Americans. I'm Todd Stern. Stand by for news and commentary next. Take advantage of the warmer weather and come explore Liberty University's campus, ranked number four best college campus in America by Niche.com. Join us for Experience LU, an all-day event that shows off our dorm rooms, classrooms, and award-winning dining hall. Or if you're short on time, attend a four-hour student-led campus tour to hit the highlights. To learn more or schedule your visit to Liberty University, text visit LU to 49596. Again, that's visit LU to 49596. Big trouble at Nyack Middle School in New York. The cafeteria served chicken and waffles to kick off Black History Month. The children were also given a watermelon-themed dessert. The principal said he was horrified and apologized for the cultural insensitivity displayed by their food provider. Principal David Johnson went on to say the menu reflected negative stereotypes concerning the African-American community. Aramark said the timing of the menu was unfortunate and the lunch ladies were supposed to serve something else. Gotta say, I'm sure the kids would have rather feasted on chicken and waffles instead of mystery meat and vegetable medleys. And no one's been able to explain to me exactly why that particular food is racially offensive. I know plenty of white folks who love eating chicken. We call it the gospel bird. 
Not racist, just finger licking good. Who knew that chicken and waffles would trigger a massive case of indigestion? It's just a good thing they didn't serve Mrs. Butterworth. I'm Todd Stern. The Hamilton Quarter Podcast and one-minute commentaries are available at AFR.net. Back to the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner. We will open the phone lines this segment. Uh, so what we discussed yesterday and today is on the table for a conversation. And I have something to share with you uh, as you're preparing to come on uh, because, uh, you know, I get asked questions all the time. Um, so let me tell you, my wife and I, uh, y- y'all know we have six children. Uh, <clears throat> we are not breaking our necks to ensure our children get into somebody's college. <laughs> we are endeavoring to seek the Lord for direction for our children, and, and we know that not all of our children, in fact, if any of our children go to, go to college, most likely it will be a minority, a significant minority, who will go. Um, but contrary to popular belief, a university is not necessary for uh proper engagement and in a in a life function for children matriculating into adulthood. Um, so we don't worship at the idol at the idol of higher education. And so people ask me, why why do I have this posture? And I say it very simply, the overwhelming majority of universities um are really um indoctrination centers just beyond the formative K through 12. Now, I'm not against education, but let me tell you something. Academia and education are not synonymous. I read more now than I'm out of formal academia than I ever did when I was in school, except for law school, and I read a lot probably. I probably read now the same volume that I, I consume the same volume of literature that I did when I was in law school now on a daily basis. And, you know, should the Lord call one of my children to become an attorney or something like that where it requires, then, of course, we'll do that. And by God's grace, we're endeavoring to prepare our children for that. But we have to, Christ followers have to get out of this idea where our children have to go this way in order for them to have a so-called good life. And so I get asked the question sometimes, hey, why does higher education seem to consistently produce degeneracy in the children who go there, the students who go there. I'll respond very simply. Have you ever heard the idea that every tree bears fruit after its own kind? (laughs) Um, And so to that, to that, and again, I'm not saying there aren't any places of higher education, but they're becoming increasingly rare. Very few. Trade schools, vocational schools are phenomenal instances to learn professional technical skills that can also produce entrepreneurial uh, destinies. But I'll maybe do a separate show on that. Let me give the phone number so that if you want to join the program, you're welcome to do so. 888-589 is the number to call if you want to join the program. 888-589-8840 is the number to call if you want to join the program. Within this conversational topic, there's a particular professor, and I'm not saying all professors are like this, but I want you to think how many may be like this that have gone undetected. All right. State University of New York at Fredonia. It goes by the acronym SUNY. There's a professor there by the name of Stephen Kirshner, who has been there for 23 years. He's described on the university's website as, I want to get it, the quote proper, the, the uh, quote, distinguished teaching professor. All right. Professor Kirshner teaches libertarian philosophy and pr- applied ethics at the State University of New York. All right. He just got caught on some videos. 
If there are any children listening, I need you to step away for the moment. Parents, pause the show and step, have your children step away. You listen first, first, and you determine whether or not it's appropriate for your children to listen. It won't be anything graphic, but just I believe this disclaimer is warranted. This professor, Stephen Kirshner, was found on video <laughs> explaining that it was not obvious to him why adults who like to have sex with children, why that is wrong. And I'm going to show you video evidence for that and audio evidence of it. I'm not, just not, I'm not, I'm not going to just accuse this man of this. I'm going to let you hear it and see it as he delivers the comments in his own words. And I'm not going to play the whole clip because, frankly, it's too graphic, some of it, to share everything that he said. Uh, but I want you to listen to this for yourself. This is Professor Stephen Kirshner from State University of New York explaining <laughs> why he didn't think it's obvious that sexual relationships between minors and adults are wrong. Clip number one, go. Imagine that an adult male uh, wants to have sex with a, a 12-year-old girl. Imagine that she's a willing participant. S a, a very standard, very widely held view that there's something deeply wrong about this, and it's wrong independent of it being criminalized. It's not obvious to me that it is, in fact, wrong. I think this is a mistake, and I think that exploring why it's a mistake will tell us not only things about adult child sex and statutory rape, but also about fundamental principles of morality. Now, you've heard me on this program. If you've been listening for any length of time, you'll recall when I played for you the TED Talk offered by Professor Merjam Hine from Germany, right? When she was attempting to make the case that we shouldn't use the term pedophilia. We should call them minor attracted persons. And then there were lots of people that were saying that, oh, oh you so-called rock wingers talking about grooming. What are you just so backwoods? <laughs> All right. So we were just making it up, huh? All right. And now you have Professor Stephen Kirshner. And I want to remind you that what he teaches to college students at the State University of New York, libertarian philosophy and applied ethics. I'll re-quote for you what Professor Kirshner said. Quote, imagine that an adult wants to have sex with a 12-year-old girl. This is what he said. Imagine that she's a willing participant. Oh, what? Huh? What? An adult and a 12-year-old girl is a willing participant? A he goes on to say, quote, a very standard, very widely held view is that there's something deeply wrong about this. And it's wrong independent of it being criminalized. He says, it's not obvious to me that it is, in fact, wrong. I think this is a mistake. And I think exploring why it's a mistake will tell us not only things about adult, child, sex, and statutory rape, and also fundamental principles of morality. He's found, I wish y'all could see Bobby's face. He's found... And on video saying, let's consider a number. You know, I'm just going to pick a number. Let's say an eight-year-old with an adult. He even says, quote, Sec the notion that this is wrong even with a one-year-old is not quite, not quite obvious to me. He said that. Professor Stephen Kirshner has been teaching at State University of New York for 23 years. Now, I will tell you, in light of these videos coming to the fore and, you know, how they came to the fore, the Twitter account libs of TikTok are exposing his videos. In light of the videos being publicized, the university has suspended Professor Kirshner and they are investigating him now. But my question is, he's been teaching at your university for 23 years and y'all ain't have no clue he thought these kind of things? I mean, did it seem like he was, like, hemming and hawing when he said that? No, he said that with his whole chest out loud. What do you think he's been saying to the State University of New York students in his libertarian philosophy class in his applied ethics class. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think he's been saying? This is what I'm talking about. He, he, he's not sure. He's, he, he's not sure that it's wrong. Now, why do you think he's saying that? It's just a principled libertarian conviction or is it something else going on? 
See, guys? <laughs> One of the biggest obstacles to overcome is to recognize that evil is, in fact, evil. He goes on to try to perform, provide some type of academic explanation for minor willingness to participate as distinct from capacity to consent. Man, that's, that's word salad gobbledygook. He goes on to say, well, children can, they can participate in things they don't always fully understand. Children sign up and prepare for bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs. They don't fully understand all that's going on, but they're nevertheless willing. I say, dude, who you think you're trying to pull a fast one on? So you saying a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah is the same as sexual intercourse? Come on, man. And the point that I'm sharing this with you for is that these people are sick and evil. And evil manifests in many different forms including in academia. Now, am I saying you should be, you know, oh, academia? No, I'm saying, but you must be due diligence. What would I look like, my wife and I, investing ourselves and our children for their formative years, and then all of a sudden say, you know what? Now we're going to punch you on over to Professor Kirshner. (laughs) Please. Please. Guys, I'm sharing this with you because when the scripture says look well into the matter, the Lord means that. And it's high time for the body of Christ to recognize we need to create internal systems using the Lord's bride to create mechanisms for our young people to matriculate into adulthood without having to be subjected to the doctrine of demons. We should not have to rely on God haters and evil and wicked people to provide our children with the on ramp into adulthood. Discipleship includes discipling the whole person. To the phone lines we go. I have so much more to say, but I want to get some calls in. We'll start in Texas where Steve is on the line. Steve, thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. Welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Hey, I'll be brief here. Uh, the Chinese uh, bought a bunch of land here in Texas, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, a couple of years ago, about 70 miles from the Laughlin Air Force Base, from my understanding. Their intention was to put like a wind farm on it mm-hmm. and uh, tap into the electrical grid, which you know is already, you know, not too good down here in Texas, but... Uh, Anyhow, I found that uh, interesting. I don't know if it ever came to fruition, but I uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Mm, thank you very much, Steve. Yes, I'm, I am very aware of that. And if you do a deep dive into all the land that the instrumentalities of the communist Chinese government is purchasing in America, you'll find a consistent thread that runs through it. You'll find a c- consistent thread that runs through it. We'll go now to Kentucky, where Reese is on the line. Reese, thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. Welcome to the program. Uh, hi, I'm Hamilton. Uh I've had, uh, called to make a comment about college education. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, it will be it will be about degrees that are actually good to go into. Uh, I've heard, I believe, from my own father and from uh, just other people, certain academia people, which are they trust other maybe not. <laughs> uh, I have heard uh, law, medicine, and uh, STEM or science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, mm-hmm. Those uh, six areas of study would be good to go into for a college education and everything else could just be a waste of your time, honestly. Mm, well said, Reese. Those are good. That's good recommendations. Those are, those are very, very uh, good recommendations. Uh, we'll go next to Oklahoma where John is on the line. John, thank you for calling the Hamilton corner. Welcome to the program. Uh, thank you, Abe. I sure enjoy you and may God continue to bless you. Um, you had talked about the Chinese wanting to put a cornmeal in one of the Dakotas. Yeah, North Dakota. And then, uh, North Dakota, okay. Um, and and you mentioned uh, officials being naive. I would suggest that <laughs> many of our government officials know exactly what they're doing, uh, working toward a one-world government. Mm, John, I think you're spot on. I, I don't think they're all naive. I think some are, but not all. I don't think all are naive. Somebody want to page Eric Swalwell for me? Eric Eric Swalwell? <laughs> fang, fang. Back to the phone lines. We'll go next to Mississippi where Anthony is on the line. Anthony, thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. Welcome to the program. Yes, Abe, I want to quickly say that both General Mad Dog Mathis, a couple of other folks under the Trump administration, they know there were no balloons flying over our nation. However, 
with that balloon flying over Maelstrom, Montana, up in Great Falls, uh, Montana, where I've physically been stationed at in the Air Force, that antenna that was under that balloon is capable of picking up all kind of signals, mm -hmm. and people aren't aware of that, and they need to get real smart that they could do anything that I help and release any kind of explosive or stuff to try to wipe our nation out. I'm going to get off and let you respond to it. Okay. Thank you, Anthony, so much for your call and your comments. And that's why I'm covering it. You know, and it's interesting that our federal officials didn't want the American people to know that. Uh, but thankfully, we had some citizen journalists on the scene. But thank you all for tuning into the program. Y'all have a great evening. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family